But I want to thank everybody. And I want to thank you for my birthday card. I got it last Friday. My birthday was February. <laughs> the card was, sta was stamped February the 17th. And it was, it was mailed right away because my birthday is the 13th. And the card was stamped Baltimore, February the 17th. <laughs> and I got the card last Friday. So thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, give her a round of applause for her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Should we sing to her? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, to Happy birthday to you. dear Dorothy. Happy birthday to you. Many, 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 many more. Well, what a beautiful thing. Are there any other announcements, joys, praises, anything notes? Pastor Bob? Yes. Um, the flowers this morning are in memory of all of those that we have um, lost or during this hard times that we've had. Um, Hopefully they have not wilted. Mm. Uh, everybody, would, would you please take a bud vase home with you? Thank you so much. You're so beautiful. Okay. And they add to the glory of God through our worship. So thank you. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Um, yes. Um, I have a joy and a concern. <laughs> First, a joy. The piano was tuned this week. <laughs> it desperately needed it. So, to sort of celebrate, and because I'm feeling a little lazy today, I'm going to play the piano throughout the whole service today. <laughs> um, my concern <clears throat> is um, for Criola, who hasn't been able to come to church. I had a long conversation with her just the other day, and she. Um, she just asked me several times, would, she, would I please extend to you all that she misses you and she, wants to, she hopes to come back at some point. Um, I offered help to bring her, but she's not quite ready for that. Um, she's in bed a great deal of the time with the long-term vascular issues that she's had. So she's uncomfortable. But she, she was cheerful on the phone, <laughs> and she wanted to say how much she misses everybody here. So I think Stacy's going to put her address in this week's messenger, and I would encourage you, she doesn't always hear the phone when it rings, so I'd encourage you to maybe drop her a card, and, you know, that you're thinking about her. Yeah. So. That. I also thank very, thank uh, Stacy and the congregation for the prayers for my daughter Julie, and she's getting diagnostic tests. So I praise God for the beauty of science, the wonderful gifts that God has given us of uh, science, medical science, and others that helping to find out what is going on with her. But she's in good shape, and they, her, your prayers help very much. And oh. We appreciate that. Any other thoughts, concerns, joys? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I lovingly call this Sunday Sheet Sunday because it's all about shepherds, and it's Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, so all the hymns are planned that way, and my prelude as well. So I just kind of wanted to be known with, yeah. Musically, it's a special Sunday. <laughs> so we can't sing today, but uh, still at this point, we'll follow along and say ba 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 in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Don't know. May we then, as we consecrate our thoughts and our prayers to the Lord, to the glory of God, let us begin with the present. <laughs>
May we rise as we are able and as we wish for the opening hymn. begin our worship with the brief order for confession and forgiveness on page 56 of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, in what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us say together the Kyrie, beginning on page 57. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us say together the glory be, beginning on page 58. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, Lord God and Lord God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray using the prayer of the day found in the silver. <coughs> o Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, <coughs> seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the readings. The first reading is taken from Acts chapter 4. The next day the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Aeneas, the high priest, Cephas, John, and Alexander, all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man had been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Let us read responsibly Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord has been my down green pastures. And you restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. The second reading is taken from 1 John, chapter 3. We know love by this, that Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. By this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For when God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit that he has given us. Here ends the lessons for today. The Gospel was taken from John, chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. 
I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this commandment from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with us all today. So many times I've stood in the pulpit, in a, in a pulpit, preaching on Good Shepherd Sunday or Sheep Sunday, as we call it at St. John's. And what a glorious thing it is to talk about Sheep Sunday, Shepherd Sunday, this glorious Sunday, on a time in which this congregation is looking forward with expectation and joy to calling an assistant shepherd to lead and guide along with congregational leaders, but in a special way to lead and guide as an associate, an assistant of Jesus Christ, the true shepherd of all Christians. Because it is the Lord Jesus who is the shepherd of this flock. It is the Lord Jesus who is the shepherd of all Christian congregations. It is the Lord Jesus to whom we look each day for guidance to lead us. I've learned something over the years, and I believe that last year, even at this time, I preached a sermon about sheep to St. John's. If not, perhaps it was one of the other churches in the circuit that we shared at that time with the Three Point Parish, as you recall. I preached a sermon about sheep and their relationship to human beings and their intelligence. And since then, because my mother always told me that sheep were not very smart, that they would drown when there would be a heavy rainstorm, they'd look up and just get so much water that they would drown and they would be foolish and follow here and there. Since then, I realized that scientists have read that scientists say that sheep are all not all that dumb. Not all that dumb. So surprising, I learned something about sheep over this last year. Now, sheep, of course, are wonderful animals in many ways. They provide clothing and food and they are very interesting for many, many reasons. And Jesus, though, is the shepherd who is more a leader of the sheep than we might think daily because we often concentrate on the needs of what we sheep have that we think about. And yet we also have obligations to the Lord God, Jesus Christ, his only son, who is the shepherd of our souls. That is, we owe him, as we are told by Brother Martin Luther and by all the scriptures, we owe God glory and praise, and we owe honor and respect to Jesus Christ, who is our true shepherd, the one and only shepherd. So Jesus tells us in the scripture readings, the reading according to John, the gospel reading today, John writes that Jesus identifies himself as the good shepherd. And we all know that pastor is the Latin word for shepherd. And all pastors who are human beings, pastors who are not the good shepherd, are human Frank, faulty shepherds. They're only human representatives. But just as in the scripture we read that when God, when using the parable, when the king sent his servants into a vineyard, the ones that he designated as his assistants 
and people did not take into account that they represented the king himself, then terrible things happened to those people. Because when they ignored the shepherd, the delegate of the shepherd, when they ignored the king, they ignored, when they ignored the servants, they ignored the king. So Jesus identifies himself as the one true, wonderful shepherd. Actually, the Greek says he's the beautiful shepherd. He's a really good shepherd. The one who attracts our souls. The one whom we are designated to follow. So there are statements that Jesus makes in this gospel that identify who he is. Who, what is the relationship? He is saying, this is the relationship that you, my people, my sheep are to have with me. And he says, this is the great thing when he says, I am, I am. This goes all the way back to Moses' experience where God lets Moses know who he is because Moses asks, what shall I tell the people when they ask me, what is your name? And he says, just, I am, which is something that is not a specific name. You cannot pin that down to a specific quality. It is not a specific name. It's I am, I am being. Jesus echoes this because he says, I am. I am the bread of life, for example, we read in this gospel. I am the living bread, the bread that comes to us in the Lord's Supper and that was established at the Last Supper. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. Before Abraham, I came into existence. I am. I am the sheep's door. I am the way by which the sheep enter into the fold of the Christian faithful. I am the way. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. I am the shepherd that is beautiful. I am the one who deserves all of your love and praise and your glory. And I am the resurrection and the life. I am also the way and the truth of the life. I am the true vine. So as so many human activities, this set of, of I am statements establishes the relationships that we have with God. I am can be understood as a kind of code language that refers all the way back, as I mentioned, to Moses to Moses' encounter with God so many centuries before the time of Christ. Moses asked God's name, and God said, You shall tell the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. We read that in Exodus 3, verse 14. In that verse, I am, in the Greek version of the Old Testament, is one that's echoed in the Gospel of John at this point in our reading today. So Jesus says, uses this phrase over and over again to let us know what our relationship is to be with Him. And He says, as we read in today's lesson, that He is the Good Shepherd. And He is the one who was the fulfillment of what a shepherd should be. In the minds of the people of Israel, there was a king who was the best example of what a shepherd should be. And as we know, that king was David. And David was one who was a mighty warrior, although he started small in the story of Goliath. He was able to defeat the Philistines and their champion, a mighty warrior, Goliath. He was a shepherd at that time. And he was used to protecting his sheep. And just as Christ Jesus protects us, David was able to slay and to protect the enemy and to protect the people of Israel. He was able to accomplish mighty deeds as a humble shepherd. The model of the good king for the people of Israel has always been King David. It has been the king who is coming from humble origins, 
who would focus on taking care of his people. The good shepherd. When people speak of somebody who is good, for example, the good doctor, for example, they mean not only that she or he is competent and can do good work, but they have a feeling and an understanding for the patients. Don't you think? Isn't that right? When you think the doctor, when you say it's a good doctor, you mean someone who has a heart for her or his patients. And so when Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd, he is asking us to understand that he is a shepherd who has a real heart for his sheep. A good shepherd, Jesus tells us, will risk his life for the flock. He'll put his life or her life on the line. That shepherd will be all about taking care of the sheep. Now one thing about sheep is that they need a leader. And that's one of the things that my mother, who was a farm girl, would tell me about sheep. Now she was out in the Dakotas, as I've mentioned before, where sheep were not highly prized. And the reason for that is sheep can be selfish. They can eat all the grass down way, way low. And so the cattle and the horses can't graze, so they starve. So people in the Dakotas, big ranchers, having horses were not so fun of sheep and sheep herds. But they sure the sheep, of course, follow the leader. The other thing that is remarkable about sheep is that they do need a leader. And so one of the sheep, if one sheep goes one way, the other sheep tend to follow that sheep. They'll follow the shepherd, too. And Jesus, as our good shepherd, is the one that we are asked to follow above all. We're asked to follow the good shepherd as he teaches us through Holy Scripture, through the Bible. As he teaches us through Sunday school and understanding and listening to messages and above all, through loving one another in the congregation. So a shepherd, though, who dies, leaves the sheep defenseless. And we can think in these days in the scripture readings that that must have been a terror that the disciples had because they had seen their shepherd, their leader, crucified, died. And then during this time of Easter, these days, these celebrations of the Easter cycle, we see that Jesus comes back in a physical presence. He is resurrected. He is risen, as he said. And they can see then the physical presence, the eating and drinking, as we read last week in our scripture reading. The test that Thomas was given, asked Jesus to give him, that he could touch and put his hand into his side. We see that Jesus reassured those disciples at that time that yes he was still there to lead them he was not going to abandon his sheep he was not going to do that but that the spirit of the lord the spirit of god the holy spirit would be with his flock and be forever there with them jesus alone is the shepherd of the christian church and yet there are people who are set aside as his assistants who come and are chosen by the Holy Spirit working within the congregation to apply the grace of God through the Holy Spirit to the selection of those who can lead the sheep in an individual congregation. Now, they are not the true shepherds. They are not the good shepherds. They're fallible people, but they're set aside, they're put aside, like this altar was put aside as a special table. You know, it's just made out of wood. You could do anything with this, but once you set it aside, you don't do auto repair on it, you don't use it for any other purpose, and you know that this is a focus for our prayer. It's a focus for our prayer. That's the purpose of that altar. And likewise, someone who goes through due process, who enters the sheepfold through the correct door of what the congregation and the synod has planned, 
that person is set aside for particular work. And the Holy Spirit guarantees that with good hearts and love, that that will be a success. Unfortunately, with human beings, that guarantee is not always fulfilled by fragile human beings. But that doesn't matter. People have told me since I've been 50-some years in ministry, well, you know, I used to go to church. I used to uh, be faithful. But you know, we had this problem with the pastor. We had this problem with the congregational president. And you know, how can that be because... You know, how can God be good if these people have made a mistake and so forth? Well, you know, that logic doesn't work because Jesus Christ is the pastor and he never makes a mistake. He's always upright. He's always there in your corner. You can't expect human beings to be perfect and without flaw. But yet, we are given the promise of the Holy Spirit that if we follow the scriptures and if we love one another, we will have as a Christian people the leadership that we need. So shepherds are leaders. Shepherds are leaders because sheep need leadership. That's one thing I've discovered about sheep. They need to follow. They need to follow the example. And Jesus Christ through scripture and through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit gives us all the example we ever need. But there is a role for leadership for human beings as well. Not only the pastor, but the congregation. You know, we are pastors, we are shepherds to one another. We take care of one another. We reach out and we give that leadership in love and spirit in this community at St. John's on Churchill Road. It's a great example. You know, sometimes people come, you have to use supply pastors um, or even have an interim, like yours truly, every once in a while. And you, when I've done these things before, I've had certain people who've come and said, well, you know what, you're doing okay, but you're not my pastor. And I have to, so why should I pay attention to you? I think that one of the things that the Holy Spirit, I hope, helps those people to understand it is Jesus who is the pastor, not the person. And so, therefore, humble understanding of what the Scripture says, loving one another in community is the key. And it's also the key for helping to choose someone who will be the assistant of Jesus Christ, the shepherd, the human shepherd, the fallible shepherd, the one who serves the infallible shepherd, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, I know my own, and I am known by my own. People know who I am. And this good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, as we know Christ did on the cross, as we know the resurrected Christ is with us today, as he will be. The shepherd knows all of his flock. He knows each one of us by name. He cares for each one of us. That's something that's way beyond a human being to be able to do, but the Holy Scripture and prayer and the understanding, the infilling of the Holy Spirit will make it clear to us that that can happen. But sometimes it's difficult to understand and to be able to accept the leadership of Christ of Jesus in our life. And yet, by prayer and the Holy Spirit and diligent study of Scripture, we can do this. And we understand that Jesus every day gives His life for us. If we only join our lives to the service of Him, we will have the promise of eternal life. Jesus says He received the commandment from his Father, to be the shepherd of his people. He said, therefore the Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it away from me, Jesus says, but I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I receive this commandment from the Father. And so Jesus is able to give his life for the sheep 
and yet remain with us, with his sheep. Those of us today who love him and serve him, try to do the best we can, know that we're not perfect, ask for forgiveness, know that we receive it every day. We're not spotless sheep. We alone cannot be spotless and be the sacrifice that was needed to keep us, to make us whole again with Christ, to give us rest from our sin. We can't do this. Christ alone could be to do this. But yet he did. And we glory in the resurrection on this Sheep Sunday, this Good Shepherd Sunday, because, because we understand this. Now, some of our scriptures today let us know what the comfort is that we have in Jesus Christ as our true shepherd. We know that no one can take that comfort for us. As we look from us, and as we look forward to Pentecost and the indwelling, the coming of the Holy Spirit, we have such a beautiful psalm today. The psalm is the glory of God in the Old Testament. It is the designation by David, the one who wrote the psalm, to comfort himself, given the grace by God to be able to be comfort, comforted, comforted in the time of his trial. And he said, God, and he called him by that name, transliterated from Hebrew, Yahweh, but God, we say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall lack nothing. And we can be confident that we shall lack nothing as well. We do not. We have everything we need. We can be confident. He makes me, David wrote, he makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. We can have peace. We can know that Jesus is in glory. He is going to come again. He has been resurrected. He is resurrected today. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you. You, my God, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. They protect me from all the things, all the terrors of this life. No matter what challenges us, we can be confident in the Lord. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. No one, no one can destroy me because the Lord is my shepherd. He is with me. Anoint my head with oil, so important in the Middle East because of the dry, harsh climate. You give a loving kindness from the congregation that gives us peace and soothing. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs, runs over. My cup is filled to the brim of the goodness that you provide. And surely then, forever, surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in God's house forever. So David sang, and so we can echo his praise today. That's the promise. That's the promise of the resurrected Christ. That's the promise of the Good Shepherd. That's the promise that dwells with us today, now and forever. Amen.
we rise as we are able to continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us show each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you all. We have left our offerings. We have left our offerings at the door. We didn't have an offering procession at this time, but we ask the Lord God to accept the poor fruits of our labors, all that we are, all that we can do, and all who we are. Everything that he has given to us, for which we should be eternally grateful, we give you thanks, O Lord. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves in your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may we continue with the prayer that our Lord taught us and asked us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of heaven. Now thankful for all that he has given us, may we ask for his blessing as he guides us, as we follow him as faithful sheep, as we follow the shepherd this week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. 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 serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.